and welcome to this new video from Calabs. Today we just got the Intrepid 8x10 camera from their recent Kickstarter campaign and we're curious to see what's inside and have a quick review of it. So let's unpack it. This camera was certainly packed better than the 4x5 Kickstarter camera which was a little bit flimsily packed and so that's a good sign. Let's open it and see what's inside. There's a self-setting zero detent for the rear and there are a bunch of markings on the bed. So a little bit of a rough movement here on the swing. There's also no zero uh, position for uh, there's no zero position for the for the front alignment. There it is. The uh, so all right. Don't lose these screws. They're not fastened onto the back. The ground glass is actually really very nice. Kind of a nice grain to it. Doesn't appear to be super sharp, but still. Not bad. It does take just a tiny bit of adjusting to get in all the way. Some of these screws are not screwed in all the way. Let's see what happens if I push this one all the way. Let's close this in here. Yeah, this screw came not screwed in all the way. These appear. Oh, this one's loose too. Uh, all kind of seem to be loose. I wonder if it's an adjustment on the camera or if it's just the way it's supposed to be. Maybe they got loose in transit. Yeah, all of these are loose. So here's our film holder. And let's see what happens here. So uh, the uh, back here, the back frame, is colliding with the edge of the holder, uh, which would require it. To, it has a very sharp edge. I think uh, a good bezel on this would certainly make it slide in more easily, but I'm having a bit of a hard time getting this holder to go in either way because it's hitting a sharp edge on both sides, on the inside of the camera and on the outside. Both can easily be corrected with some bezeling, uh, but this holder doesn't seem to be locking in at all. Maybe it's a problem with our holder. We can try it. All right. Yesterday we started filming this, and as you saw in the part before, we unpacked everything and kind of looked at the camera. But then we ran into a couple of problems, uh, such as this. Fidelity Elite. A lot of finagling and pulling from the side it does lock in nicely. Fidelity Deluxe. Again, with a lot of finagling and pulling from either side, it doesn't lock in. No matter what I do, it doesn't lock in. Even if you take the uh, ground glass frame off. The uh, ridge doesn't line up with the cut in the camera. We posted it on Facebook and got an immediate response and they very generously sent us a complete replacement. And so uh, I'm just going to open this right away. I haven't looked inside, uh, but let's do the uh, test of the hour and uh, open it, mount it on the camera and, uh, and see if the problem has actually been resolved. Okay, so Intrepid said two things. They said one is that they, well, they improved, uh, they said they cut three things on this back. One is they modified the notches here, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. They said the ground glass is improved, I think, but um, they did send us one with a chipped ground glass. Not a big deal. The other one's very nice. And of course, generously, they did overnight this from England, which is really nice. Um, and there are now embedded neodymium magnets in the back here up 
and down just underneath where the screws are. I'm not sure if this was in place in the previous one. No, they weren't in place in the previous one and I'm guessing that is so that there's less of a chance that you lose this screw uh, when you're unloading the camera. This is a very clever design. Though unfortunately in order to uh, take the back off you really have to lift the screw off. So I'm not sure this would be bulletproof but certainly a welcome modification. You can just very closely compare the two. As you can see the divot here is cut much lower than the old one. The old one is the one on the back. And so we had a problem closing the camera in horizontal mode, so we'll see if this solves the problem. Um, but we'll get to this in a second. Another problem we noticed yesterday is that this back, which is the one that came with the camera, is bowing out. I'm not sure if the camera is showing it, but there's a gap forming on either side of these corners just on the front where the plywood is cut to a relatively thin portion and didn't cause a light leak but my guess is if this continues on it's increased since yesterday by just a little bit um, if it continues this will eventually be a light leak but uh, and since the screws press on the sides here they don't affect the top but this is something that we'll wait to see if it happens as well with the new one. I'm going to put this back aside for a minute um, this one is bowing as well, but not as much as the other one. So let's put this back on. Initial view. Here's a wooden holder. Let's see. Oh yeah, very good. Now it sits and I have about a two or three millimeter plate, which is good. And okay, let's try. Fidelity Deluxe, which really was the main point of contention yesterday. Okay, so it definitely loads in nicer and uh, slides in better. And one of the comments that we had is that there definitely needs to be a bevel up here, and there really is a nice bevel along the edge here, as well as on the edge here, which really makes all the difference in allowing the holder to slide in better. There is no handle. There's no way to carry it. Um, I'm sure the plywood is strong enough to carry it and maybe the uh, side cutouts here on the bottom can be a carry handle but you can't really carry this camera with a lens on top uh, from the bottom when you're taking it off a tripod. When we got the camera yesterday you will have seen that uh, a lot of the screws were loose uh, causing the focus to skip, uh, to skip teeth as we were doing it. Um, also it was a little difficult to, to tighten the focus uh, rack. The finish of all the cutout surfaces is not as nice as the outside and the outside itself isn't really finished very well either but it's, it's a very kind of basic hitch and sink camera uh, where you wouldn't expect that kind of thing. When the camera is extended at any kind of level uh, the front is somewhat flimsy. Because it's so light um, and because it's made of relatively uh, complex materials like 3D printed materials that are combined with metal and wood on both ends um, and the attachment point is just one in the middle. We already saw the plywood bowing on the back here and I, I feel like it's going to bow a little bit here under pressure. The second thing that we found is that uh, it's a little difficult to put in a lens. So here's a Ronar 360 uh, in a DV board just to simulate a shutter. So it's a decent sized lens. It's not too big, it's not too small. Um, but you you kind of have to press it in and when you do that, this one actually seems to have a hard time coming in at all. So I really have to force the slider down here, but in order to do that, I'm also moving the entire camera. But once the lens is on, everything becomes even more difficult to stabilize. The next thing uh, that we found is, of course, the back problems. Now, uh, Intrepid were very gracious in sending us an overnight express refitted back. Uh, we know of at least a couple of other users that had problems uh, fitting um, Fidelity Deluxe and wooden holders into their backs and I'm hoping that uh, Intrepid caught this in time and uh, will now send the correct backs with all the remaining cameras or future cameras. Now, let me go back to this old back one more time for just a second. Another thing that we didn't like so much is the bungee cords. The bungee cords certainly hold the ground glass frame in place, 
but we have a question about its longevity, especially because of this right corner here. And this particular side, the bungee cord has already started to chew into the uh, to chew into the plywood, and I'm wondering what happens um, over time with repeated insertions of film holders when that happens on both sides. Does the bungee cord survive? Is it easy to replace? It looks like it's covered up and be kind of a chore to replace it. But in any case, what do you do with a broken bungee cord when the rubber fails? Uh, and of course, tension on rubber is not uh, as long lived as tension on steel, like a stainless steel spring. Perhaps that's part of the economy of the camera. Uh, so these should be common replacement parts for the 8x10. On 4x5, uh, like on many things on this camera, these innovative concepts work much better uh, because the tension amount and the size lend themselves much nice, much more nicely to this type of material. On 8x10, not so much. Also, of course, the ground glass frame has a tendency to move around quite a bit when you're inserting and removing a holder. And right now on this revised back that we got, there's a huge amount of play on it. So composing here, making critical compose, composing as to where the edge of the frame would be. So right now, if I just let it go, there's at least a whole centimeter of uh, cutout frame that's not gonna be on the film when you're composing. So you have to be very well aware uh, of that on both sides, depending on where the ground glass is positioned inside the cutout as opposed to the opening on the camera uh, and where the film holder's gonna be. And every time you pull in and out a holder, the ground glass frame might be moving, there is some, a lot of play for it. In this particular camera, the struts are not perfectly seated straight, So, and this is probably due to material fatigue. And as you can see, if I'm moving, they're both moving independently on either side. It's very difficult to know when the front standard is perfectly parallel to the back. Um, on 8x10, this be, tends to be more critical than on 4x5. When you want to close the camera, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that we use a camera on a landscape mode or horizontal mode more than we do with the vertical mode. But if I close the camera, let's see how much better this is. Yesterday with the old back, we found that this strut collides with this divot here uh, and prevents the camera from being uh, closed straight. And uh, let's see how this goes. So uh, actually the cut that they made didn't really affect much and as you can see, the back is, I can basically stick my finger in between um, the rear ground glass frame and the strut. And um, the cut that Intrepid made uh, on this back actually makes it a little harder to grab the ground glass frame to bring it up. So this, uh, packing a camera in this kind of condition, this is the risk for a broken ground glass or something, just because things are shaking around. And then you have to reverse the back, which really means that in this case, you're gonna to have to reverse the back every time you open and close the camera. One other thing that we, uh, that we found yesterday is right now this nut is locked as tight as, as I can, it's, but the focus is still moving. Overall, it's a nice camera, has some nice features, especially being very light and very inexpensive, but uh, it does have a couple of points of contention. Intrepid's very innovative concept, especially in terms of price and the way the camera is built and manufactured, lends itself very well on smaller formats such as 4x5 where everything is tight and rigid and in this type of construction can be made to work. And it really does work. Uh, on 8x10, I think not so much so because the size is big, because the tensions are bigger, there's more flexibility to parts. The spans are longer and the tolerances have to be more accurate in order to get better results. So this is a camera that can work, but you really have to work at it to make it work.